I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Keys to Kingdom Living, and I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, coming to you from the sanctuary of War Harvest Church North. Today we're going to be uh, sharing with you a brand new word. It's entitled, uh, You Can Live a Victorious Life. In John 16, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and it's right before he's fixing to go and give his life for all mankind. And he tells them that uh, even though he is leaving, uh, they will be able to pray to the Father and ask Him, and the Father will give them what they have need of. Up to this point, they've not had to ha stand on their faith because Jesus was right there with them. But now they're going to have to ask and believe in faith that they will receive it from the Father. This word is so impactful and powerful, it can literally change your life. Just listen to what the Spirit has given for you to hear today and let it go into your spirit and change your mind to believe more in God. You can live a victorious life. Uh, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. The word is very clear in that. So today, that's what we'll continue in. Uh, there in John 16, 24. Let's look at it and see what the Holy Spirit is saying to the body today. Jesus is speaking, and he says there in verse 24, Until now, he's speaking to his disciples, right? Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Isn't that a good feeling whenever you ask God, and you know only God knows, and then you get the answer to that? You know it was God. It, it, just, it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, don't it? These things I have spoken to you in figurative language. He, he spoke with parables many times. But the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask uh, in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, See now, you are speaking plainly, and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. Now, mind you, they've been with him three and a half years, and at the end of his earthly ministry, they finally start seeing the light. <laughs> By this we believe that you came forth from God. And Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming. <clears throat> yes, has now come that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. You might want to underline that. These things he has spoken to us so that we will have peace in this world. Because in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, let's set the stage up for this so you get the full impact of what's going on. Like I said, Jesus has been walking with his disciples for three and a half years at this point now. And he's getting ready to go back to the Father. He's fixing to be crucified. And so he's preparing them for what's about to happen there. He said, I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. So up to this point, the disciples haven't had to live by faith because Jesus was with them. Think about that. Wouldn't it be nice to have Jesus live with you 24-7? Light bulb goes out, say, Jesus, we got a light out over there. Can you fix that for me? Milk's running a little low. Can we have a little refill here? That would be so awesome, wouldn't it? And you know that's how it went because Jesus, I mean, somebody run out of wine. Jesus says, where the water? I mean, he was Johnny on the spot, Jesus on the spot, wasn't he? Whenever these men met up with opposition, Jesus was right there with them to help them overcome that opposition, wasn't he? Now Jesus has come to the end of his time on earth with them, and he's preparing them for the days that he'll no longer be with them in human form. And they will have to stand on faith to overcome their enemies and the storms in life. Now, Jesus told them, and it was written for our uh, ed edification and comfort, in this world, we will have tribulations. Can anybody bear witness with that at all? But Jesus told us to be of good cheer because he had overcome the world. 
right? Look at verse 33. I'm fixing to lay something on you here. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. So in him we're going to have peace, but when we're in the world we're going to have tribulation, right? But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Did you just catch that revelation that Jesus spoke out of his mouth? Missed it, didn't you? He hasn't been crucified here, has he? He has not died. He has not been buried, nor has he been raised on the third day, yet he tells us that he had already overcome the world. I didn't catch that until the Holy Spirit quickened that in my spirit. He's still alive, but yet he says, I have overcome the world. That, that's, that says, you know what? The more I know, the more I want to know. If you said that before you went to the grave, I mean we can preach some serious sermons on Easter Sunday about how Jesus has overcome death, hell, and the grave. But I have never preached a sermon on what Jesus did before he went to the grave to overcome the world on our behalf. That tells me that Jesus' real battle wasn't fought while he was dead, but rather while he was still alive. For 33 years, listen to this. Jesus faced the tribulations, heartaches, spiritual attacks, and demonic forces. And for 33 years, Jesus lived a victorious and sinless life. He got down to the end of his life here on earth, and he said, I have overcome the world. It didn't matter what Satan threw against me. It didn't matter how many people forsook me. It didn't matter how... how hard the night God or how long the day God or how much we were out of this or out of that I was able to live through all of it victoriously and sinlessly y'all need to praise God for that right there now what I'm going to preach today flies in the face of religion but that's nothing new he lived a victorious and sinless life. And when he gets down to the point of the end of his life here, he says, I have overcome the world. You as a Christian can live a victorious life. I don't care if you're two years old or 102. If you've got faith in Christ, you have the power to live a victorious and sinless life. Boy, I had to get you booted out. Now, Jesus didn't promise new believers a life without tribulations. But he let us know up front there would, that there would be tribulations for us in this new life. But thank God he didn't stop there. He also gave us the key to help us live a victorious life as well. How do we do that? In Christ. Turn with me to uh, look there in uh, John 17:1. Now remember the context. This is just, though it's another chapter, it's still in the same context, right? Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that your Son may uh, glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh. God gave him that authority, right? He had authority over all flesh, and he exercised that authority. Adam was given authority of God over all the beasts of the field, but Adam did not exercise that authority. In Christ, you, you've got authority, but you, you have to exert that authority. You've got to stand up. You've got to speak out. You've got to declare the word of the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you've got to speak to that stuff and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God up in here, right? You don't lay down and accept it and take it and say, this is the way it's going to be. God's given you authority in Jesus' name, in Jesus' uh, power, and you take that authority. Don't look, do like Adam and, and, and let Satan usurp your authority, right? He said, God, you've given uh, me authority over all flesh, that I should give eternal life to as many as you have given me. And this is eternal life. If you ever want to know what eternal life is, this is it. That they may know you, the only true God. What did I preach last Sunday? Daniel eleven thirty two. 32. Those who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits, right? See, it ties right in there. This is eternal life. That we may know God as our Father and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now, 
The moment you become born again, you overcome the world. That's hard for people to compute. You're telling me, the moment I, be, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, I overcame the world? Yes. I don't know if I agree with that. Well, don't agree with me. Agree with the Word. I'm going to give you a word. You may say, well, there are days I certainly don't feel like I've overcome the world. I feel that way too. You mustn't listen to your feelings. Feelings has nothing to do with faith. Faith isn't based on feelings. Faith is based on the Word of God. Right? So you wake up and you may feel like the world's on top of you, but even if it is on top of you, you're still more than a conqueror over it. It's not based on feeling. It's based on faith. You get up in faith and say, this is the way it's going to be. This is the way I choose to see it. This is the way I choose to believe it to be. Right? Don't let yourself see yourself as a grasshopper and your enemies as giants. Take the authority that God has given you, speak that authority, and say, I may look like a grasshopper to you, but in God's sight, I am more than a conqueror, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Faith has nothing to do with feelings. You base the faith on what God has said, not what man has said against you. Now, if Jesus tells you that in him you have overcome the world, then take him at the word, right? Now, Jesus lived a sinless and victorious life over this world, and he has, given power, has been given power to grant us, fallen mankind, eternal life. We've established that. Let me say some things here and see if you agree with it. Life, light is greater than darkness. Love is greater than evil. Faith is greater than fear. Then eternal life is greater than death. Is it not? Doesn't it say that, that death was swallowed up in victory through the cross? Then, then life is greater than death. So if you're born again, if you've been given eternal life, then you are victorious. You have overcome death. You will, as a Christian, you will never experience death. Not one moment, not one instant, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. You will never know. Listen, you will never know what separation from God is because you have eternal life which is connected to God and nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So if you're born again, then you are victorious, child of God. You are no longer an enemy of God, neither are you separated from his life and power. So you are able to live a godly life in this fallen world. Now, to be born again means Jesus, the victorious one, lives inside of you. And he makes you victorious. See, the work's already done. I've got to pace myself. He's the one that, that got the victory. He's the one that overcame the world. He's the one that defeated death, hell, and the grave. He's the one that lives inside of me and the one that lives inside of you. But he does that by faith. Say, by faith. By faith. Now, that's the kicker right there. It's by faith. You no longer, matter of fact, we no longer have to live in fear to dying or death. You have the freedom and the liberty to live a redeemed life in Christ apart from fear. Think about that. You get that revelation, you'll be free. Since we no longer have to fear dying, we no longer have to fear death, we now have the freedom and the liberty to live an abundant life in Christ. I don't owe anybody anything except to love them. You're not my master, and I'm not yours. That's a life of freedom. Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it to the full. 
The only way to enjoy the redeemed life in this world and not live in fear is to choose to live by faith. You've got to choose on purpose to live by faith. I am going to live by faith. I don't care what the report says. I don't care what the circumstances. I can preach this. Because I see a lot of opposition against this ministry that if I looked at that and I listened to that, I'd shrivel up into a fetal position and say, God, is enough. Take me home. I choose to wake up and look at what God said and to hear what God has said and, and then watch God do what God said. First John 5, I'll give you more scripture. I said, the moment you get born again, you have overcome the world, right? Let's see if scripture bears that out. First John 5, 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the... Christ, the Messiah, the sent one of God, is born of God. And whoever loves him, who, who begot was, uh, whoever loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. So if I love Jesus, then I'm going to love y'all. If you love Jesus, y'all are going to have to love me. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God. So we found out a while ago what eternal life is, right? Now we're going to find out what the love of God is. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Okay, I love God every once in a while. <laughs> For whatever, are you a whatever? I think King James says whatsoever. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Congratulations, you're an overcomer. Give yourself a little... And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Say it. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The moment you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and you received him as Savior and Lord, God translated you from the kingdom of darkness and put you in heavenly places in the kingdom of light. And you are now an overcomer of this world. That's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that much better than you're just a sinner saved by grace? You'll never be nothing. You'll never amount to nothing, and you'll never do nothing. That's a bunch of hogwash because it's a bunch of men trying to excuse themselves for not obeying. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That means he wants you to have a victorious life. So that means I won't have any problems, right? wrong it means you will have victory in the problems right who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that jesus is the son of god the word is confirming to you what i stated earlier whatever whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world john doesn't tell us that we are overcomers because we're born again of god John doesn't just tell us that we are overcomers just because we're born again of God, but he gives us further proof that we have overcome because our faith is in Christ. Now, just the fact, I'm going to go a little deeper, so don't drown. Just the fact that you and I have placed our faith in Jesus as the Son of God is further evidence that we are overcomers. Did you catch that? Probably not. Let me break it down. He said, whatever is born of God overcomes the world, right? And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. you got to take those two and set them aside. I have already overcome in Christ, but through faith I am going to overcome. I already have the victory, but just because I have the victory doesn't mean I'm going to have to, uh, not going to have to face some stuff. So even though I am born again by faith, I am going to have to live a victorious life in this earth by faith. It's one thing. It's one thing to have the Spirit of God. You're not just a believer by faith. When you believed in Jesus Christ, what came inside of you? 
His Spirit, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. His Spirit bears witness with who? Our spirit that we are the children of God. If we're, we're children of God, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, right? Now, I have the witness that the Holy Spirit is in me and that I am now a child of God. Now that I'm a child of God, I know that I am more than a conqueror and I can do all things to Christ. But I also know I've got to live in this nasty world. So what's going to give me the victory to get through this, this world while I'm here on earth? My faith. It's not my faith that, that got me saved. It's my faith that's going to walk, and the just shall live by faith. If I want to live the victorious life, I've got to do it by faith. Now, I have two witnesses. I have the Holy Spirit living in me. You have the Holy Spirit living in you as a Christian, right? Giving you evidence, giving you proof that you are a child of God. Amen? You're not? All right. Now, other than that, you have another proof that you're born again and that you have victory over this world because when you face opposition and you face hardships and you face what looks like impossible situations, you have eyes to see things that people in the world don't see. Jesus said in 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul writes it, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no man is, no temptation is caught to anybody that is not common to man. But with every temptation, God has made a way of escape that you may bear up under it. So when you have faith, faith that, that calls you to get up and do what God said and, and obey God and, and work through these problems, when you have that kind of faith, you get up and you see a way out. And when you see that way out, it is yet another confirmation. I am born again, and I'm more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. And I have the ability. I don't have to lay down and die. I don't have to throw up my hands and quit and go back to the ways of the world. God says, I'll make a way where there seems to be no way. You just, you just got to look hard enough to see it. <laughs> you might have to exert some strength there. Pray a little. But he'll make a way. How many here has got a death sentence and the doctor said that it's over? And, and God said, no, it ain't. Raise your hands. Come on. Look at this. See? But God, but God made a way where there was no way, right? So he, he says, you have, you have overcome the world in Christ, but now that you have overcome the world in Christ, you're going to have to live by faith. And, and when you live by faith, it will show the world that you are born again. Now, once you and I come under attack after salvation, we can use our faith in Christ as being our present help in time of trouble. And our faith will assure our continued victory over this world. Now, if you're truly born again, then you will be willing to live by faith and through faith. That's the key right there. I'm born again. I have no option but to live by faith and to live through faith. Now, just like you can't breathe underwater. You ever tried that without scuba gear? You can't do it. A fish can't live out of water. A Christian can't live without faith. That's good. Let me say that again. Just like you and I can't live out of water, uh, uh, in water, a fish can't live out of water, and a Christian can't live without faith. The just shall live by faith. So if you're living a defeated life, you're not living by faith. Turn with me to 1 Peter. First Peter 4, beginning with verse 12. Some people have this illusion that once you get born again, everything's going to be fine. Scripture does not support that. I pray it is. I, I, I hope it's just a, a, a blessing one after the other, but there's a good chance Satan's going to get in there and mess it with the plan, right? Look there in 1 Peter 4, 12. 
Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to what? Try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. So whenever we go into fiery trials as Christians, we're not doing it because we've done something wrong. We're having to suffer because we're associated with Christ and Satan hates us. In this world you shall be hated, Jesus said, right? But rejoice to the extent that you're, you partake of Christ's sufferings, uh, that when his glory is revealed, you may be uh, glad, also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Now, genuine faith can be tried by the flames of hell, and you will come out triumphant. Genuine faith can be tried by the flames of hell, and you will come out triumphant. Give me scripture and verse. I think it's Daniel around the second or third chapter where three Hebrew men said, we're not going to bow to that golden image you made, Nebuchadnezzar. And he says, I don't want to do this, but you're forcing my hand. I'm going to have to throw you into a fiery furnace. And he, he was so angry. He says, I want you to heat it up seven times hotter than it's normally heated. When they opened up the doors to throw the men in, the heat was so strong, it, it burned up the people that were throwing the men in. The men had to literally walk in of their own accord. When they went in there, they get up and look and see the, that there's four men. There's four men. We only threw three. How is it that there's four in there? Well, we've come to the end of the program today, and we're out of time. But before I leave you, I want to encourage you. This message needs to be heard in its entirety because of television constraints. We're not able to do that at this time. I would invite you to go on our uh, website and find out our contact information. Call our church office and order that DVD, and we'll be glad to send it out to you wherever you're at so that you can get the full impact of what the Spirit is saying. Christians do not have to live in bondage to Satan. They don't have to live in fear to Satan. We can live a victorious life because of Jesus Christ. He said, I have overcome the world. And because he has, we too can be overcomers of this world and live in victory all the days of our life. Isn't that exciting to know that? Isn't it great to hear a message that, that gives you not a, just a positive uplook, but it gives you a faith-filled uh, outlook on life that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So until we meet again, may God richly bless you. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512.